Hi everyone and welcome back to the 613 Laws of God Countdown. I got some great feedback from the first episode and I'd like to clarify a few things. I was wearing sunglasses in the first episode because of a little flare-up of conjunctivitis. It happens from time to time. And yes, I'm bald and a bit sensitive about it, so I wear a cap. Also, I'm not a rabbi or a priest or trained in theology in any way. I'm just a modern fella curious about uh, the 613 laws of God. Uh, to be honest, this is my first reading through the list for the most part. So let's get started. Number 601, Deuteronomy 25:17. Remember what Amalek did to the Jewish people. Now, I thought I had finished with Amalek, but uh, here he is again. They must have really hated him. For the sake of this law, perhaps we should consider Amalek as a substitute for all the people who have persecuted uh, the Jews over the centuries, and perhaps uh, remember the persecutions of the Jews, uh, or if the Jewish people would suffice to, to keep this commandment. Uh, number 600, Deut Deuteronomy 25.13, not to possess inaccurate scales and weights, even if they are not in use. I think that is probably uh, a law of the land and, and, and very good advice in general. Uh, number 599, Deuteronomy 25.12, Save someone being pursued even by taking the life of the pursuer. Well, that's a curious one. Uh, it seems to go against the thou shalt not kill part. So let's take a little closer look at this. The actual verse reads, uh, If two men are fighting and the wife of one of them comes to rescue her husband from his assailant and she reaches out and seizes him by his private parts, you shall cut off her hand, show no pity. So, I would imagine many of the laws we're going to encounter are how Copper Age or Bronze Age tribes people dealt with their issues. Uh, following this command will get you tossed in prison for years, hopefully. Uh, maybe it worked back in uh, the 3rd century BC, but... Uh, we don't, uh, we don't chop off hands in modern secular society. Number 598, 597, and 596 are all of a similar theme, which is widows. Uh, Deuteronomy 25, 9 says to perform haliza, which is to free the widow of one's childless brother from yibam. Uh, Ahaliza is, under the biblical system of uh, levirate marriage, known as yibam. So that's the type of biblical marriage. The process by which a childless widow and a brother of her deceased husband may avoid the duty to marry. The process involves the widow making a declaration, taking off a shoe of the brother and spitting on the floor. Uh, Deuteronomy 25.5 says the widow must not remarry unless the ties of her, with her brother-in-law are removed by Haliza. Uh, see above. And Deuteronomy 25.5 says to perform yibam or marry the widow of one's childless brother. Uh, so there was a social obligation to marry your brother's widow. This was probably very practical back in the day before social safety nets. Uh, the brother of a man who died without children is to permit it and encouraged to marry the widow. However, if either of the parties refuses to go through with the marriage, both are required to go through with a ceremony known as the Haliza, involving, involving a symbolic act of renunciation of their right to perform this marriage. So, if you are an in-law and you don't want to get married, uh, to be technically correct, you should do the shoe spitting thing, noted above. Number 595, Deuteronomy 25.4, not to muzzle an ox while plowing. 
So very few of us will plow with an ox, but if you do, don't muzzle it. I'm not sure why. Maybe a cruelty thing? The ox needs to eat too, I guess. Numbers 594 and 593 concerning lashing. So Deuteronomy 25.3 says, The court must not exceed the prescribed number of lashes. And Deuteronomy 25.2 says, The court must give lashes to the wrongdoer. So as with the, as with the hand cutting off thing above, uh, we have moved past the lashing stage of our culture. Not long past, though, in my country, I'm pretty sure they were still lashing prisoners and children into the 20th century, but, you know, if brutal corporal punishment worked for all the centuries we used it, our world wouldn't be in the mess it is now. Uh, Maybe we should give compassion to try for a while. Uh, And finally for today, number uh, 592 and 591 in the top 613 countdown. Deuteronomy Deuteronomy 2519, to leave forgotten sheaves in the field. And number 24, Deuteronomy 2419 says not to retrieve them. Uh, The full verse reads, when thou reapest thy harvest in thy field, and hast forgot a sheaf in the field, thou shalt not go back to fetch it. It shall be for the stranger, for the fatherless, and for the widow. And the Lord thy God may bless thee in all the works of thy hands. Uh, So most of us aren't grain farmers either, but I think we are being instructed here to give some of the fruits of our labor to the needy. Maybe give out some of the pocket change the next time you walk past someone with a cup. All right, that's it for today. I hope uh, to see you here next time for the 613 Laws of God Countdown. See you later.